Tarzan and the Diamond of Asher. The following inaugural chapter of the new Tarzan radio series brings to radio and to Tarzan's many thousands of friends an entirely new story of strange and thrilling adventure. Jane Porter, her father, Samuel T. Philander, and Cecil Clayton have left Africa. Clayton subsequently has confessed that he is not the true Lord Greystoke and has died aboard ship. And so Tarzan of the Apes, mighty hunter, lord of the jungle, has come into his name and title, John Clayton. Lord Greystoke. Tarzan and his friend, Paul Darnell, French naval lieutenant of the African Patrol Service, have traveled up the coast to Loango, a French African port where Darnell is awaiting a ship to take him back to France. Tonight, we find the two friends at the close of dinner in the grill of the Metropole Hotel discussing future plans. Eh bien, Tarzan, mon ami, now that you have become an English lord, what are you going to do? My title, Lord Greystoke, means nothing. It gives me another name I have no use for. The estates and fortune I can do without. But you expect to return to the jungle? Why not? It's my home. The only home I know and love. No, Darno, I'll stay here. But I'm going to miss you, my friend. Mm, yes, and I shall miss you. Why not return to Paris with me, eh? The lights, the boulevards, the music. Calm, calm. You can well afford it now. I don't enjoy the comforts of civilization, as you call it. What I've seen of it and the people who live by its laws, which I don't understand, are shallow, <coughs> false. My boulevards are the elephant trails. My lights, the sun, moon, and the stars. I'll stay here. Mm. And I cannot say that I blame you. But this Greystoke fortune, your fortune now, what are you going to do with it? I don't know. I hadn't thought about it. But you must, Tarzan. Uh, may I offer a suggestion? What is it? Why not use the fortune in establishing a plantation here in Africa, if you insist on remaining in the jungle? A plantation? What for? All Africa is mine. All that has not been spoiled by the Tarmangani. Tarmangani. <laughs> You do not admire the ways of the white man, do you? But what about Mademoiselle Jane? Jane? What about her? Oh, bien, now that Clayton is dead, she is free to marry you. You will marry her, eh? Well, she wants time to convince her friends that she is not bearing the Greystoke title in marrying me. I don't understand her reasons, but I'll go to America in a year and oh, perhaps... Oh, Lord Greystoke, uh, here are lady and gentlemen who are asking for you. Some friends of yours in London suggested that they look you up. Uh, may I present Mr. Gregory and his daughter, Miss Gregory? Lord Greystoke and Lieutenant Darnell. How do you do? Sure, may. Well, daughter, have you lost your voice? Mr. Mitchell has presented Lord Greystoke and Lieutenant Darnell to you. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, gentlemen. But good grief, Dad, don't you see the resemblance? Lord Greystoke looks enough like Brian to be his twin brother. Why, bless me, so he does. Excepting for that scar on your forehead, Greystoke, pardon my mentioning it, you might very easily pass for my son. By Jove, yes. Remarkable, what? I knew him rather well. He outfitted here at Luango for his trip into the interior. And that's the last we ever heard of him. You wanted to see me, Mr. Gregory? Uh, won't you sit down? Thank you. Thank you. Well, you see, it's like this. We stopped at the Ritz in London. 
chance to meet a Lord and Lady Tennington. When they learned that daughter and I were coming out to Africa, they insisted that we look you up as being the only man who might help us. Lord and Lady Tennington are our very good friends, eh, Darno? Mm, they are indeed. I'll be glad to help you in any way I can. Well, Greystoke, we've come out to investigate the disappearance of my son, Brian. You see, my brother came to Africa two years ago with an expedition sent out by the Field Museum of Chicago. Chicago is my home, you know. And they went into the Belgian Congo for specimens of gorillas. Yes. It's been a year since his last letter. He wrote they were outfitting here in Luango for a second trip and that they were on the track of speaking apes. Talking apes, mademoiselle? Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it, gentlemen? But Brian was pretty level-headed and he wouldn't go traipsing off into the jungle unless he had some idea of what he was going after. Well, anyway, when the expedition returned to Chicago, they reported Brian as missing. They didn't report him as dead? No, Greystoke, simply as missing. Four of the original expedition died or were killed on their last trip into the jungle. Fear, gorillas. However, they were accounted for. My son simply vanished. No trace of him or a particle of his clothing was ever found, though they searched for days. C'est étrange, strange. Now, it would be logical to assume that if a wild beast had been the cause of his death, traces of his torn clothing would most certainly have been found. N'est-ce pas, mon ami? Yes. Well, that's exactly what we think, Lord Greystoke. And that fact has convinced us that Brian is alive. Pardonnez-moi, mademoiselle. Yes, boy, what is it? A note for the sahib there. A note for me? Yes, sir. The men sahib, she point to master and say, give note to big sahib. A woman? Who is she? No sabi, sahib. All right. Here, a uh, dashi for you. It's funny, Darno. I don't know any women in the Congo. I can't imagine who... Bien, bien, bien. Open the paper and read it. Excuse me, Miss Gregory. Certainly. Listen to this, Darno. I am waiting in the little salon beside the main entrance. I must see you immediately. Extremely urgent. Magra. 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 A most peculiar name. Arabic, perhaps? I don't know. But this isn't meant for me. There are many big men in the room. I'll return it to the woman. We'll be back in a minute. Uh, you will excuse me a moment? No, of course, Mr. Gregory. Page brought me your message, Dom. He insisted it was for me. Of course, there has been a mistake. I return it to you. Oh, but there is no mistake. Then what do you want? Is it possible that you do not remember me, Magra? Strange that Brian Gregory so soon forgets his friend. What did you say? Brian Gregory? <laughs> but Brian Gregory, you cannot fool Magra. We have not seen each other for a long time. Yet, Magra has not forgotten. I... I'm sorry, but I've never seen you before this moment. And my name is not Brian Gregory. So you are not Brian Gregory. Oh, I am so sorry, but do not turn now. It would be dangerous for you. Lal Tusk, you cannot have forgotten him also. He's directly behind you. And I know his knife is touching your back. Seket, quiet, Magra. What do you want? Uh, is better. We want only that you go with Magra where she will take you. Very well. Now, your arm, please. We will cross the lounge as the old friends we are, no? And be careful, Gregory. Make no sign or do not stop to talk with anyone. Put your knife away, Laltosk, if that's your name. I'll go with the woman without the knife in my back. We go where? To a room on the floor above where you will meet another old friend, and where we may talk quietly without interruption. Come, Brian Gregory. It has been a long time since we have seen you, my friend, no? Ah, oh, Brian Gregory, you have changed somehow. And Magra likes you better as you are. I don't know what you are talking about. So, up these stairs, this way, a few steps and we are there. I have friends waiting for me downstairs. Let's get this over as soon as possible. That will depend entirely upon you, Brian Gregory. Here is the room. One moment. Enter, please, Brian Gregory. We have brought Brian Gregory to your Atantom. Mm -hmm. You have done well, Magra. 
And you, Lal Tarsk. Be seated, Brian Gregory. You too think I'm Brian Gregory, eh? Well, you've all made the same mistake. I tried to explain to these two, but they insisted. However, Lal Tarsk's knife was unnecessary. Perhaps, but I did not wish to accept the chance of a refusal. <laughs> Uh, but it is beside the point. You are here, and you are Brian Gregory. All right. Have it your own way. Now, what do you want? Need there be any doubt as to that? Come to the point. As you wish. I am prepared to offer you 10,000 pounds sterling for the map. The map? What map? Come, come, Brian Gregory. Do you take me, Atantom, for a fool? You know very well that I speak of the map showing the location of the city of our share. And you are willing to give 10,000 pounds for it? 10,000 pounds sterling. Not enough. 20. My friend, you would be safe in offering me 20 millions. I've never heard of such a city, nor a map. Hmm. So you are not Brian Gregory. You have never heard of our share and know nothing of any map. <laughs> Remarkable. It's pain you've all mistaken me for someone else. I'm sorry I can't help you, but I am not Brian Gregory. I've never heard the name before tonight. It is useless to deny your identity, Brian Gregory, to one who knows you so well. Have you forgotten that I witnessed the fight between you and Gomez in which you received that scar on your forehead, eh? I received this scar in a fight with Bolgan... Uh, with a gorilla many years ago. Gomez was strong, Gregory, almost as strong as a gun, and yet you killed him and very soon after vanished from the expedition. <laughs> They thought a lion had mauled Gomez and that you had also been killed. But I knew differently. You went alone to search for the city of our share. Very interesting, Tom. But I'll go on about my business now and leave you to yours. One moment, my friend. You deny your identity and refuse my offer, possibly because you wish to keep the father of diamonds for yourself when you find it, eh? But I am determined to have the diamond myself. Now, you will not refuse this. No! Don't worry, Margaret. I'm not afraid of his gun. There is an easier way, Master. And one less noisy. Lal Tusk's knife. <laughs> Lal Tusk's knife, yes. Yes, that is better. A shot might possibly be heard outside his room, even though the gun has a silencer. <laughs> Gregory? Unless you produce the map at once, you will not leave this room alive. I shall count three, and then... <laughs> Lal Tusk's knife. One, two...